Well there, finally done. And that didn't take long. Only about two hours and 36 and a half minutes. But it's a pretty intricate, it's a pretty intricate piece. And uh, you know, my old woodpile CNC here, I have to admit, it doesn't move real fast, but it gets the job done in the end. So this is um, a 14 inch um, lightweight hexagon back or, or honeycomb back mirror that I'm going to be making. It is an exact scale up of my 12 and a half inch mirror blanks which have been so successful. I've ground and polished and finished several of them now and I have a working cell design for them and it's just the, 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 the coolest thing since sliced bread. And I just wanted to scale it up and see if I could go bigger. So I scaled the design up to 14 and you know on my third attempt at cutting it I looks like I've got a perfect mold design. So this is a positive. This is what the back of the mirror is gonna look like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, it's got a dam around it here. So I'm gonna put a, a dam in it all the way around. And I'm gonna pour it full of refractory plaster. And once I get the foam off the plaster, I'll have a negative of what the mirror is gonna look like. I will put the, uh, um, a refractory material dam around the negative and I will pile glass on top of it and melt it in the kiln. It will fill in all the nooks and crannies and then I'll have a positive in glass that looks just like this. That's the plan anyway. And I've got it working with the 12 and a half. We'll see how it scales up. In fact, speaking of scaling up, I've scaled the design up to 16 inches too. And uh, sooner or later, I'll give that a try cutting it on the mill. So. Third time's the charm. This is the third time I've tried cutting this 14 inch uh, mold for a uh, lightweight telescope mirror. Screwed it up the first two times and of course it always the program screwed up right at the very end after wasting two and a half hours cutting. Couldn't screw up at the beginning. But this time I got it just right. It looks like it seems to be dimensionally perfect. It's aesthetically beautiful. It seems to be just what I need. And uh, I have, as the, the observant among you may notice that I have switched to um, pink insulating foam rather than using the florist foam. Um, the only reason for that is I didn't have another piece of florist foam glued up big enough for this and I had some of this insulating foam around so I give it a try. I've used it for other projects and it works pretty well. So I thought, well let me try it with this foam and see. And third time's a charm. It seems pretty good. It's dirty as all get out. My vacuum system needs to be better. But I can, I can blow it out gently with some compressed air and get all that debris out of there. And uh, happy as can be. And uh, I'm not putting all my eggs in one uh, lightweight mirror design basket. I'm also casting slumping molds for lightweight mirrors. And of course, this was cut on the CNC mill too. It's hard to tell, but this is actually has quite a concave dish to it. And uh, I use this as a dam around it, and I pour plaster in it, and voila, I get slumping molds. These are F3 slumping molds for 10 inch mirrors. Going to start out small, work the kinks out of slumping, and build up to something bigger. I've already stuck my toe in the slumping a little bit. There's some pictures and video on the website somewhere, but I'm really going to try and get into it now. My kilns are going to be really busy slumping and uh, melting glass in a few months. Okay, so this slumping mold was cut from the same sort of pink foam that I'm using over here to cut this uh, lightweight honeycomb back mirror mold. So one thing I found about this pink foam is it has a skin on it and it seems flat and rigid enough uncut but the moment you cut through the skin it sort of takes the tension off the surface and it wants to warp all kinds of different ways especially if you're making pretty big cuts. So I have found that um, I glue the piece of foam down to a piece of plywood first before I machine it. Makes it easy to clamp the foam down on the machine to to machine it. And then it stays um, rigid and doesn't warp. And it also is convenient to handle it when I'm uh, pouring it full of plaster because the plaster is pretty heavy. 
and that gives it a nice rigid backing for pouring it full of plaster so it doesn't warp or move or sag or anything under the weight of the plaster and I get a nice a nice smooth surface here the uh, the foam was cut with the CNC mill back here like I said it's got quite a dish to it a quite quite concave and um, then it was a uh, filled with uh, auto auto body putty to fill in the uh, the imperfections sanded and then painted with a couple of coats of sandable primer and sanded again to make it nice and smooth and then it was waxed to make it nice and slippery before I uh, casted the the plaster in it and let me tell you what these two pieces popped right out I made two just in case something goes wrong with one of them and they popped right out after, out of that mold so I'm very happy with the way it works and if I get some good slumps out of these things, I'll scale it up to bigger sizes and maybe faster mirrors, and uh, we'll see how it goes. I may be in the mirror slumping business in the future. So, the old uh, wood pile CNC has been getting a real workout making these molds. And uh, it works pretty well for cutting foam, but it has some issues. There's a lot of play in the axes. I use drawer slides for the axes, and there's a lot of play in them, especially on the x-axis, the long axis down here. I built this to have almost three feet of travel, and it's just got way too much play in it, especially when it's way extended out. So, I am going to upgrade. Uh, old old wood pile CNC is going to get an upgrade. My brother says my problem is that I use too much wood in my projects. Well, I don't think so. I'm an old carpenter. I can build anything out of wood and make it work. But uh, And I built a really, really rigid structure here. It's not the wood that's the problem. It's the drawer slides. So they got to go. I'm going to replace the, the x-axis first and eventually the y-axis with 80-20 um, rails and linear bearings. I happen to have some. I lucked into a whole bunch of 8020 rail a while back at a business moving sale. I got it for a song, snapped it up, threw it in the truck and got out of there before they changed their minds. And it's been sitting out here in my backyard until I could put it to good use. And to start with it's going to get put to use rebuilding the wood pile CNC machine. I'm hoping to get a lot more accuracy and rigidity out of it with the 8020 rails and linear bearings that I've got with the drawer slides. So we'll see how that works. That's a project probably coming up, ooh, maybe this fall. And as it is, it works pretty well cutting foam, because there's really no cutting forces on foam. So um, even though there's a lot of slop in it, it actually does pretty well cutting foam. It's not quite as accurate cutting wood, and I wouldn't trust it at all with even light metal. But maybe with the 80-20 upgrade, that'll, that'll help a lot. We'll see. But like that, that's an upcoming project, and we'll see how it goes. Also on the list of uh, upgrades for the old woodpile CNC is putting the uh, control system in a, in a nice enclosure box and mounting some fans in it so I don't have to uh, have a floor fan blowing on the heat sinks all the time to keep it from overheating. So that's another near future upgrade for that. It'll also keep it from accumulating dust, especially if I put filters on the, uh, on the fans. Because right now it, it accumulates quite a bit of dust. In fact, the whole garage is covered with pink dust. After cutting this thing out, the vacuum system isn't sucking up enough of it, and the the air blowing through the router router's blowing it all over the place. I'm gonna open the the big back door here in a minute, get my leaf blower out, and blow the dust outside. It's the easiest way to clean up, I've found. So I'll spare you that noise. See you later. <laughs> 